So what are your favorite things to be included in? Um, I like making the guest list, man. Just anything. <laughs> Just <laughs> send the invite. Getting the VIP invites yeah. are really good. Parties, uh, <laughs> invitations to go out for dinner. Yeah, I just, I just like being thought of. Pretty much. Just put me on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's been a year and a half since I've seen most people, but I'm still here. What, what do you expect is going to happen today oh, with, with, we got a microscope, we got some fiber optic lighting. The last time we saw this microscope set up was in an inclusion video. So if I had to guess, I would say that we're going to be looking at some inclusions. If you're going to be looking at inclusions, not just based on the fact that they're interesting, why would you be looking at inclusions? Why would you be looking for them and why would you want to see them? Well, inclusions can offer a lot of insight as to the conditions geologically during the gemstone's formation, and it can also provide hints as to where the stone was formed. I'm glad we're doing inclusions today because I've actually been curious recently, are there any conclusions, inclusions, <laughs> inclusions that lead to conclusions about the identity of a gemstone? That's actually one of the reasons you really want to see inclusions in a gemstone a lot of the time is that they can be diagnostic in some cases, or at least give you a really good idea and narrow down the, the possibilities quite, uh, quite significantly. So what an inclusion in a gemstone is, they occur in various different ways. What we're looking at is a mineral that was present and then encapsulated by the gemstone that formed around it. And so you see that trapped inside. We're gonna look at some uh, inclusions that are so distinctive that they should give you a really big clue. Okay. You know, diagnostic inclusions as to what the gemstone you're looking at is, okay. in fact. I, th I, th I think I know some but I will be excited to see the ones that I don't know. All right, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, take a look. You may have to adjust the eyepieces okay. there. Well, it's difficult staring down into that little ring uh -huh. of light. Well, I sure see a lot of green, I'll tell you that. Yep. Kind of has me thinking, well, there are a couple green gems, but this flavor of green is has me thinking peridot, but I cannot remember what this inclusion in particular is. Uh, so describe the inclusion that you're seeing. Well, it's kind of a disc. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a disc? Well, no, it's sort of got a dark center. So the little <laughs> black spot in the middle is chromite. Okay. And it is basically caused the, it's at the center of that little disc. Am I right about peridot? Yes. Okay. I'll take those points, please. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, wait, is it a lily pad? It is a lily pad. I got there. I got there in the end. That's so hilarious. what you're looking at here is uh, the little chromite yeah. uh, is the little black spot in the middle. And then the lily pad is the uh, radiating disc like shape uh, right around it. Right. OK. Hence yeah. the name. Yep. Beautiful. I love it when inclusions have names that lead you right to them. It can be difficult to focus in on them sometimes because peridot is strongly doubly refractive. And so oftentimes those little lily pads will be doubled and okay. uh, a little bit blurry because of that, especially if you have to get them under fairly high magnification. This is a pretty small one. Uh, they can be fairly large, but they are they are very typical of peridot. I remember the first time I held, uh, it was maybe a peridot or a zircon up to my eye with, with the loop. And I was like, I cannot are my eyes broken? I thought I couldn't yeah. focus, and it's because the back facets were all doubled. Okay, it's a little challenging to get these little guys set up here um, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, one of the things you learn with using a microscope is you're literally like painting your subject with light because you're having to get light to go in at certain angles yeah. to bounce around inside it to hit the inclusions that you want to illuminate. So this is another uh, diagnostic inclusion here. Uh, the gemstone color may be a little bit of a clue, but uh, have a look and see what you think. It's pink. Some wavy lines that sort of follow the same mm -hmm. waves, yep. <laughs> if you will. Nice positioning on this. I would say those inclusions, uh, they're great. What an anvil size <laughs> hint that was. <laughs> <laughs> Are we looking at tiger stripes here? Yeah, some people call them zebra stripes, some people call them tiger stripes. Uh, do you remember what they're indicative of? Oh, is it an amethyst? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's so 
Gosh, the way you've got the light going through that, it makes it look absolutely yeah, pink. Yeah, I know it really does look okay. pink because it's it's blown out to be able to see that. One of the, the gems that is very difficult or can be very difficult to uh, tell the difference between is uh, amethyst and purple scapolite. They have almost the same refractive index, very oh. similar in density, like most of the tests that you do are gonna give you the same results. So whenever you see these zebra stripes or tiger stripes inside, you're like, oh, yeah, not a light. Yeah. So this, while it's diagnostic, isn't as much of an inclusion as more of a growth feature. So this hasn't really encapsulated something to make those, but uh, it, it, it has occurred as the gemstone was forming to give you that distinctive shape. Okay, I see. Okay. All right, so that one's a little tricky. And so let's get back into another one that is an inclusion okay. uh, inside. And uh, I, I will tell you, the next one that I'm gonna show you is one of the finest gemstones in the company's collection. And if you're going uh, on a scale of one to 10, this one is definitely an 11 for its variety. Okay, as far as diagnostic? Diagnostic value. and quality and everything, it is, it is just, Okay. The, the best of the best of it for its type. I've I've got a hunch. We'll see. All right. So here is my favorite gemstone in the collection. This could not have been hyped up more. No, 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 and and it, it absolutely lives up to the hype. So, and and you won't really see this very well at all with the naked eye. But the color of the gem is actually deep enough that it disguises the inclusion a little bit. But this is one of those situations where. It's nice that we had the diagnostic lily pad. It's nice that we had the diagnostic uh, um, zebra striping. Mm -hmm. This inclusion actually makes the gem more valuable. I keep narrowing in on my guests, so I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Come on, are you serious? Yeah. I'm gonna keep looking at it because I want to, oh, not yeah. because I have to. No, it's, it's mesmerizing. Wow. It's just right in the middle. Oh yeah. Whoever cut this was like, I have an idea and they did it. Yeah, this this is wow. like I said, the, the perfect example of this uh, this variety. I mean, that doesn't even look real. Is it a Demantoid Garnet? Absolutely. Are those horsetail inclusions? Those are horsetail inclusions. And what does that tell you about the location? This is one that actually gives you a hint as to the location as well. This is one of those that I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Russian. Exactly. You can get some little tiny ones in some of the, the Persian ones down around Iran. It's you know part of the same oh, geological, okay, okay. but they're like little tiny strings, you like, but the real big full horsetail inclusions, you can almost always take to the bank that they're from Russia. And do you see what's in the very center of it? Oh, is it chromite as well? It's chromite. Okay. So so it's chromite and what is radiating out from that chromite is a mineral called bisolite, uh, which is an asbestiform mineral. So it's in the same group as asbestos okay. uh, is. And uh, that's what forms the horsetail. So those little bits of uh, bisolite radiating off of the chromite. fibrous kind of nature. Okay. And sometimes they'll flow out more behind it, depending on how you've cut them to where that's, it looks more like a horse's tail. This one looks like a, a, an explosion of fireworks just uh, yeah. right overhead. So the next one that we're gonna look at uh, is uh, one that'll be a little trickier. It's not uh, as much of a slam dunk, but it is uh, definitely a strong indicator. Okay. But it's very classic for its variety. Next one, so this will be a little trickier because this is a diagnostic, but it is very indicative of what the uh, okay. gemstone is. And if you recognize the inclusion, this should be the gem that comes most to mine, immediately to mind. Yeah. Okay. Looks cobwebby. <laughs> yeah. Looks kind of messy in here. Mm -hmm. Very messy. I will tell you this again, the color of the gemstone is absolutely no clue. No matter what color it was, <laughs> the color would not be a clue. Really? It's an allochromatic kind of situation? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's almost uh, also a little hair-like because they're like thin. Mm -hmm. These are called trichites. Uh, and they're, they're small little hair-like fluid-filled uh, inclusions that are very uh, prominent in tourmalines. So these are all two-phase potentially? Some of them? Yeah, so uh, you, you could potentially have a little bit of uh, gas bubbles in there as well, but typically they're more liquid inclusions, but okay. uh, occasionally you can have a little uh, gas in there as well. You said cobwebbing, which is exactly right. You know, fine, thin lines, that's, that's spot on. Like I said, it was funny you were saying it was a mess in there because tourmaline is known for incorporating just anything it can gobble it's, up. So it's that's, that's it's a messy, messy stone. <laughs> So final round, I'm gonna to try to make it a little easier on you, oh, on, you. The, on the next one. So let me set that up and we'll take a look. I see bubbles. Oh, are those two-phase bubbles? Dang, and I also see these weird, um, 
kind of zigzagging lines just yes. in all orientations. And I'm trying to remember if I've seen those before. I don't know if you have or not. Well, um, this, is, this is a gemstone that is actually often faked. So this, uh, this is an inclusion that you really, really want to see to authenticate that you're looking at a genuine variety of this gemstone. Moldavite? Spot on. Let's go. Okay. All right. No, I know about the, when you said it's often faked, I was like, okay, well then the fake Moldavite doesn't have the gas bubbles in it. Well, no, or it shouldn't. It does. That's what I'm saying. The bubbles aren't what you were looking for. It was the other the inclusion. Yeah. Do you remember okay. what those are called? Le Chatlerite. Le Chatlerite. Yeah. It's a type of glass that forms in the Moldavite. It's similar to quartz, cristobalite, and other forms of SiO2. It's, it's very, very distinctive when you see it in Moldavite, those squiggly lines. Those are a Le Chatlerite glass. Okay. So it is a completely different material in there. It's not a growth feature? It's not a growth feature. It's it's just, it's a different phase of glass. It, it, it typically forms uh, in, in high impact situations. Well, the yeah. meteorite. Right. It's, it's it is a high impact situation. It's literally fused silicon dioxide, uh, silicon dioxide, so it's fused quartz, and then as it's going through, it, it's it's cooled, but it's you know glass that that fused from that, uh, and just has you know very distinctive look when you see it inside so it, of yeah. So it, molten silica, mm -hmm. I guess, fused quartz, mm -hmm. gets flung into the air and flies for miles and miles, cooling down, yeah. which is why you have the the waviness, the rippliness. And you're not going to see that inside of just, you know, somebody's mel melted down a, uh, a soda bottle. You, you notice how it's got the, the, the neat little squiggly form in there uh -huh. too. There's, there's some even more interestingly formed uh, Le Chatlerite that you may have heard of. Have you ever heard of Fulgurites? No. Yeah, so uh, the Schottlerite uh, doesn't just form inside of Moldavite or from impacts. You can also get it from fused silica from lightning strikes. Oh, so it's it's a okay. form of fused silica that. that that you find in sand, you know, like down in glass. Florida and, and sometimes over in Africa. Yeah. So that's another place that you find it. Okay. Well, thank you, Christopher, for allowing me this uh, unique opportunity to look at all of these insane in mineral inclusions and gem inclusions. It's it's. The list goes on and on of possible things that you mm -hmm. can find inside a gemstone. I enjoy them. And so my question for you uh, folks out there is, which do you prefer? Do you prefer uh, interestingly included gemstones or do you like your gemstones flawless and clean? Uh, please let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell. And we'll see you inside some more gemstones on a later episode.